So you would, you would, you would say like uh, Prophet Daniel believed in the Trinity? Of like, course, I can easily prove that to you right now. Really? Yeah, you ready? Oh. But I, I want to show you something. Do you have a Quran with you? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Can you go to chapter 22 of the Quran? Yep. Chapter 22 of the Quran. Uh, no, right? Yeah. Uh, when you Surah al can you read verses 6 and 7? Yeah. It is a. Um... Uh, that is because Allah alone is the truth. He how many are the truth? To the Before you move on, how many are the truth? Allah is the truth alone. Allah alone is the truth. Now keep reading. He alone gives life to the dead and he alone is most capable of everything. Okay, so who alone gives life to the dead? Uh, Allah, yes. Now read verse 7. And certainly the hour is coming. There's no doubt about it. And Allah will surely resurrect those in the graves. So pay attention to what your Quran said. Allah alone is the truth. He alone gives life to the dead. And the hour is coming. Allah will raise them out of their graves, right? Yes. Yeah. And now go to John 5, 21. I know you're going to say, you're going to say that these are the words Jesus says. And Jesus is going to perform these actions, right? Okay, so now explain to me how can Jesus claim the things that your Quran says only Allah can do? Yeah, yeah, I um, I understand that would that, that's why I don't reject uh, the Bible saying that uh, Jesus is God necessarily. Okay, it's just that question I had in mind. So uh, it's clear then. So before you ask me another question, so you got it. Jesus says, "Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so too the Son gives life to whom He wills." And then He says, "The hour is coming, and it is now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live." And then he says, the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. So you you clear and you see Jesus is claiming the things that even your Quran says only God Almighty, not a creature can claim, right? Yeah. yeah. And then also in John 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he's the truth and he's the life. The very things the Quran says are true of God alone, right? Yeah. So then if Jesus has already said all that, why then would you be surprised that after the resurrection, when he's still flesh <clears throat> with a glorified body of flesh, that Thomas could then say, my Lord and my God, when all throughout the gospel, John, the writer, is preparing you for the climax that Jesus has gone out of his way to show, I'm not the Father. I'm the Father's Son who's equal to the Father in essence, in nature, in power, and glory, and ability, who also became man, Therefore, at the climax, you have now Thomas making the full Christological confession that John is preparing you for all throughout those chapters, that he is the Lord God who became flesh, though he's not the Father and not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have an answer to this. Now, do you? Uh, here's the final one I want to ask you about. According to chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran, 57, verse 3, it says, he is the first and the, uh, the last, the inward and the outward, and he knows all things. Allah is the first and last, al-awwal wal-akhir, right? Yes. So now you agree that this is true only of Allah, because to be the first and last means you were there from the beginning with the first of them, and you'll be with the very last generation of creatures, right? Yes. Yep. That means Allah is timeless and eternal, right? Because for him to be there at the beginning, at the start, and for him to remain till the end, that means he's outside of time, the creator of time, and can therefore be with us throughout all time, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it basically, first last means one who's eternal, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. now I'm, I'm going to read something for you. You ready? Yeah, okay. I know where you're going. Okay, yes. so you know that. Uh, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, do not be afraid, I'm the first and last. That would be Allah, right? Uh, yes, it would be. If, yeah. Ah, but then your Allah in verse 18 says, I'm the living one and I was dead and behold, I live forevermore and I hold the keys to death and Hades. So when did your God Allah die? That's Revelation 1, 17 to 18. Uh, we wouldn't say Allah died. But that's Allah. Only Allah can say I'm the first and the last. 
Yeah. Like I said, I, I don't deny that the Gospels and the epistles and so on uh, portray Christ as, as God. But uh, that's the words of Jesus. Jesus is claiming that. So you do admit that as far as the New Testament's concerned, Jesus claims to be God Almighty in the flesh. Yes, in its lens. Yes, of okay, course. Okay, good. Yeah. So then but, how sharp is Hashem in bringing up this objection when the objection is pathetic and easily refuted? Hmm. And we talked about well, the like Trinity. I said, I, I, I even believe that, to be honest, I think the Trinity is harder to get than Christ's deity in, in, in the New Testament. I still see it's, uh, I still see it's a bit more of a stretch than finding Christ's Why? deity. Why is it a stretch? You uh, mean if, if the Father is not think, Jesus? Well, let me let me walk you through this. If the Father is not Jesus, is the Father God? The Father, yes, the Father would be God, yes. Okay, so now we've already established at least two persons. As you admit that Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh and he's not the Father, right? Yeah, like I said, you could find that the Father's God, the Son's God, the Holy Spirit's one, but couldn't you just say, well, that, it's modalism then, right? Uh, how is it when they're talking to one another, loving one another, interacting with one, one another, and one sends the others? Yeah. So you're saying it's play acting? Mm-hmm. That's yeah, modalism? again, <laughs> you, you're experienced, uh, <laughs> so I can't, I can't, I can't answer this. But yes, so uh, but you, so point. then let's let's before you move on. Hold on. So the father is not the son. The son is not the spirit. Spirit is not the father. They love one another, communicate to one another, and send one another. So unless God is a, is deceiving us or he's schizophrenic, it's not the same person. But you do admit the father is God, the son is God. So do you have any doubt that the Holy Spirit is also God? Because I'll show you that very easily from the Bible and the Quran. I'll even use your Quran to show the Spirit is God, even though I don't believe the Spirit of the Quran is the same Spirit. No, I know that in Acts. Uh, no, not Acts. Yeah. That's to me. I don't even use Acts. Acts, I think, is the weakest case. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, like I said, okay, you could you could find it in there as well. I'll okay. Get, so what what's stopping you from following a religion that's so? opposes and contradicts the bible not just new testament but the old testament why well, follow a man what I think, yeah i think like i said it's the um uncontinuity between the old and the new and the wait, 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 oh, do, do, do. you didn't hear what i said the discontinuity between the old and the Quran. the old testament buries the Quran. the Quran doesn't agree with the old testament in what way uh Believe in uh, in one person, one God. Okay, and I, I will challenge you to show me in the Old Testament where it says that the one God is one person. But let's go with that. In the Old Testament, that God is the father of Israel. Is Allah your God, the father of Israel? Uh, we wouldn't say father, no. Okay, so that's one discontinuity. In the Old Testament, the God of Israel appears as a man quite often. Does your Allah appear as a man? <laughs> But doesn't like people like Saint Augustine say it was um, it was an angel rather than um, okay? Uh, so you're appealing to Augustine, a, a Trinitarian, to talk about the angel of the Lord, who's not a creature, who's the second person of the Godhead, to explain away just the Old Testament. I just went to the Old Testament. I didn't give you a church father to tell you what the Old Testament means. The Old Testament tells us they saw the God of Israel. Jacob wrestled with God. Isaiah saw Jehovah, and Daniel saw the Ancient of Days. So do you agree that your Allah can appear as a man, an older man with white hair and a robe? And do you believe that your God Allah can appear as a man and wrestle with Jacob? Okay, let's say that the Old Testament, um, it shows that the incoming of Christ, right? It shows the... Um, the no, I'm talking about, about God himself the... appearing. I didn't even say about coming of Christ. I said God appearing. So you would, you, would, you would say, like, uh, Prophet Daniel believed in the Trinity? Of like, course. I can easily prove that to you right now. Really? Yeah. You ready? Because oh. I, I know a lot of Christians who would say it was just a, a progressive revelation. And, uh, Do you want me to prove they, it to you? They, you can tell me whatever. I, don't, I can give you 50,000 Christians with 50 opinions. Do you want me to show you from Daniel the Trinity? Uh, yeah, go on. Then may as okay. well for education. Go to, go to Daniel 7. Open it up for me. Go ahead. Daniel 7. Uh, this is the son of man, right? Yeah, not only son of man. How many persons does he see? You keep son of man, but did you forget the ancient of days? Okay, I mean Daniel 7. Okay, read it for me. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel, Daniel 7 had a verses dream. 9 to 10. Sorry, the verses 9 to 10. Daniel 7 verses 9 uh -huh. to 10. 
as I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. Okay, now his you're reading too fast. Like, Before you read too fast, how many thrones? One or more than one? Thrones, so plural. Okay, so thrones, pay attention, I'll keep reading. Were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. So how many seats did he take, the Ancient of Days? One. Okay, keep in mind, Ancient of Days. Now, does this Ancient of Days appear visibly? Let's see. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. Oh, so he has hair? His... Uh, it's just so here, yes. So he has white hair, huh? Like an older man? If you want to label an anthropomorphical language oh, to Whatever it, you yeah. want to label it, dude, he's still seeing it, right? Yeah, in his vision, yeah. So he's seeing an older man with white hair and a, a robe on a throne, right? Yes. Okay, now keep reading. His throne was flaming with fire. How many thrones? His thrones or his throne singular? Singular. Uh, but he saw more than one throne, right? Beforehand, yes. But uh, but the engineer only takes one throne, right? Yes. Okay, keep now keep finish it because I want to make sure you're getting it. And its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand, ten times ten thousand stood before him. Now, this is talking about the Angelico standing in attention to receive orders from this one, right? The Ancient okay, of Days. Yeah. Now, this Ancient of Days, and I'm going to show you, and I, I, I think you see it, is God Almighty. Does your God Allah appear in visible form on a throne with white hair and a white robe and multitudes stand before him? No, uh, hmm, I they see. Wouldn't, we wouldn't see this. Okay, so now that's one. Now let's go to person number two. Read now, same chapter, Daniel 7, read 13 and 14. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days How many is that? and was led in. How many is that? The son of man approached who? The Ancient of Days. Count. Son of man is one. Ancient of Days is another. How many is that? Well, that's two now. Okay, keep in mind. So the Son of Man enters the presence of the Ancient of Days. He was led into his presence, and what was given to him? He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Now, you really baffled me. This is an Old Testament passage long before the New Testament. Daniel sees thrones. One is occupied in the ancient of days. The other is given to the Son of Man. How do I know? Because you can't have a kingdom without a throne, right? Yes. How long does the Son of Man reign? Everlasting. So he, he never stops reigning? Uh, yes, he wouldn't stop reigning. So now you really baffled me. So there's another figure in heaven alongside the ancient of days. And he reigns forever with the Ancient of Days, and he's worshipped by all nations, tribes, and languages forever and ever. And you're trying to convince me that Daniel believed there was only one divine person. Why is the Ancient of Days allowing this Son of Man to reign with him forever and allowing him to be worshipped by all creatures forever and ever if he's a mere creature? And how is this compatible with the Quran? Because you said the Old Testament, discontinuity with the New Testament are you saying this is compatible with your Quran? Uh, no. Okay. Now let me show you person number three. That was two so far, right? Yeah. Now go to Daniel 5, 11 and 14. Daniel 7. Five, five chapter 5, 11, 14, where... They're looking for someone to interpret the miraculous hand that showed up and wrote on the wall, Minni Minni Tekel Parson. They don't know what it is. So now Belshazzar is told there's a wise man in your kingdom. It's not about Daniel. He will be able to interpret this because he used to interpret for your father, Nebuchadnezzar. Notice why he's able to interpret. 
Sorry, this is Daniel 13. Daniel 5, 5, 5 11, 15. chapter 5, verse 11, and then 14. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. Now, remember, in this the, is reflecting their pagan understanding, right? It's not really the uh, holy God's yes. spirit that's in them. It's the spirit of the holy God, right? Yes, because they're in Babylon, right? Yes, right. So, But they realize the spirit is in him revealing mysteries, meaning the spirit is all-knowing, isn't he? Because the spirit <laughs> reveals to Daniel things that even... The gods and goddesses of the pagans are incapable of doing right. Uh, uh, the spirit of the holy yeah, gods. So far, right? In whom? In him is the spirit of the holy gods, right? In him, yes. And what does that spirit give him? Finish it. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom, like that of the gods. So wait. Who's enabling Daniel to have wisdom that's divine, that's otherworldly, that's blowing the minds of these magicians, sorcerers, and diviners? Who's giving Daniel that wisdom? I'm not sure. Read it. It's right there. It's since... No, it's right there. Notice the causal connection. The spirit in him. The Holy Ghost. So there's uh, the spirit I'm, in him. I'm it's not... not his human spirit. It's the spirit of the Holy Gods. They're thinking this spirit is from the Holy Gods. No, it's not from uh, the Holy Gods. Yes, yes, it's like uh it's not his spirit, but something else. Yeah, so it's the spirit of the one true holy God, right? Uh why why why, why would you think that? Because I mean, are you saying the pagan gods sent the, their spirit to inspire Daniel when Daniel is all about the one true God inspiring him to be his prophet? Uh, Whose spirit was in him? The spirit of the pagan gods? No. Uh, uh, well, it's just the holy gods and that could be... Yeah. Uh, My friend, I know you think, he... you think logically and rationally. Be rational with me. They are pagans and they're speaking from their pagan background. They know there's a divine spirit in him. That's giving him this wisdom that is rivaling and equal to their gods. So are they right? There's a spirit in him that's inspiring him? Yes. But they're uh, wrong. Okay, so this, uh, I misunderstood. I thought Daniel was saying to someone else. That no, there's a they're man. talking about Daniel. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, okay. Okay, so okay, now I... is the spirit of the true God in Daniel? Hello? Is the spirit of the true God in Daniel? It's right there, man. Daniel 5.11. Yes, in there, but in, in, in the pagan perspective, they thought there was gods in him, yes. Yeah, so they're wrong that it's the gods, but they're right that spirit is in him, right? Yes. And who's enabling Daniel to have wisdom that rivals that of the gods in their mind? They're thinking this wisdom is divine. It's otherworldly. It's not human. Who's giving him that wisdom? You're, it's right in front of you, man. You said it. Who is giving him this the wisdom? Spirit. The spirit, right? So here, the spirit is enabling, empowering Daniel to know things that are mind-blowing, that are beyond human comprehension. That's the point I want you to see. Who? The spirit. Now, you read verse 11. Read verse 14. The king, Belshazzar, is now going to talk to Daniel directly. Notice what he says to him in verse 14. I have heard that this, uh, who's saying this, Daniel? This is Belshazzar saying it to Daniel, not Daniel speaking. It's the king speaking to Daniel. I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you and that you have insight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. Right? So notice the king is saying to Daniel, Daniel, I've been told the spirit of the gods in you, and this is why you have such wisdom and insight. So now let's count. Ancient of days, son of man, and the spirit who enables Daniel to know things that are beyond human comprehension. How many is that, my friend? Can you count for me? Mm, I just... Uh, free, but... But what? What happens if the, uh, the, the king, uh, the, the Babylonian king, was just uh, uh, like... 
uh, wrong, right? I mean, and so Daniel doesn't uh, rebuke him. Can you now read on? And tell me where Daniel says, "Shut up, King! You're wrong. You know what you're talking about." Read fifteen on. Give me Daniel's response. Let's play your game and see. And and why would the spirit necessarily have to be a distinct spirit hypostasis? Like, Even why better. Let's be go with spirit? it. Let's go with it. So then, God Himself is indwelling Daniel. Is that what you believe? Does Allah do that for you? Let's run with your logic. So God himself is in Daniel, indwelling him and empowering him. Is Allah in you? No, but could he not inspire him? Okay, but it says the spirit is in him, inspiring him. So if it's not a distinct person from God, then you end up with God himself indwelling Daniel to empower him. So does Allah indwell you? No. So then you give me further proof that Daniel buries your Quran. It's not an agreement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yet you have a problem with the Old Testament supposedly being discontinuous with the New Testament, but it never bothered you that the Old Testament contradicts your Quran. Uh, 